Hello, everyone. This is attorney uh, Anthony Benitez with the Mark Lopez Law Firm. And today I have the pleasure of having uh, my friend and also immigration attorney Katie with us. Hello, Katie. How are you doing today? Hi there. I'm doing well. Thank you, attorney Benitez, for having me. Oh, no problem. So, Katie, can you please introduce yourself to everyone out there? Yes, absolutely. Uh, my name is Katie Rosenberger. I practice immigration and family law at my firm, Villa Rubia and Rosenberger. Um, we have a firm of two attorneys and a very awesome, dedicated staff. Okay, perfect, perfect. And so, so Katie, so um, this weekend, um, Saturday to be exact, I was at the soccer field with both my kids, and I was going through my Instagram, checking my Facebook, and all I kept uh, reading about was that a judge ordered the reinstatement of DACA. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Very exciting news. We thought um, after the decision by the Supreme Court over the summer that we had this great victory, but there have been some hurdles along the way. But it sounds like this announcement by the judge um, announced late Friday seals the deal and now DACA has been reinstated. Okay. Um, and so why, why is this a big deal, Katie? So there were a lot of young people, dreamers, who would have been eligible, but the Trump administration abruptly ended the program in September of 2017. So young people who've gotten older or are now eligible or for whatever reason were unable to apply before lost that opportunity and are now able to take advantage of that. It's a huge win. Okay. And so, so, it, so I know we're getting a new president start January. What does that mean under, under this, under, under Biden? So essentially um, now, even before Biden, which obviously we have hopes that immigration landscapes will change under the Biden administration, but even now before then, young people who are now eligible can apply. Um, it extends work authorization, uh, the ability to work lawfully, get a driver's license, probably get scholarships and attend school for those who um, didn't qualify before, or maybe they renewed and were only able to get one year of work authorization, will now be able to get two years. Okay. And so, um, what? I mean, some people out there may not know what DACA is. What, what exactly is it? Sure, that's a great question. So DACA stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And so it applies to a group of young people who entered the country prior to June 15th of 2007, who are under the age of 16 when they apply, and were um, in school, have attended school, graduated. There's also um, uh, the ability to apply if you've been in military service, and it enables the applicants to receive, most importantly, probably protection from deportation, and the ability to have a work permit, a work authorization to work lawfully, have a driver's license and some stability. Um, and this program has really helped grow the economy and help provide stability for families. Okay. And so um, obviously, Katie, somebody out there um, that has questions regarding renewing their DACA, um, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. So we are taking consultations um, currently via phone, video, um, in person, and we have some distance options in our, our new office space. Our phone number is 463-207-9900. And we've just recently moved as well to 6349 Southeast Street, just south of 465. We've got lots of space, we can accommodate everyone. Um, so feel free to give us a call and contact us for a virtual or in-person consultation. Okay, and then one question I have for you, Katie. Um, I, obviously I do criminal law, I don't do immigration. Um, you guys do immigration. But I see a lot of my, I see people call me and they ask me, hey, listen, um, I, I currently have DACA or I qualify for DACA. I have now a criminal case. Um, is that gonna affect my, my, my DACA? And so can, can criminal conviction um, affect somebody who maybe qualifies for, for deferred action, DACA? So I'll have to give the typical lawyer answer and say it depends, but it's absolutely something that you, you should consult about. So um, if you're pulled over, stopped by the police, you're arrested, get into some sort of um, issue and now have criminal charges, then you should absolutely be consulting with an immigration attorney if you have DACA or considering applying. 
um, if you are considering applying now under the initial request and you do have some criminal history, it's really important to get a hold of those records and consult with an immigration attorney. And sometimes a great uh, criminal attorney like you would be able to um, work on uh, finding a plea or um, dismissing charges altogether so that it won't impact DACA because there are certain crimes that could disqualify you. Yeah, and I, I obviously we've worked in the past and we have a lot of uh, mutual clients together. One of the big things that I see is DUIs. You know, if you cannot be guilty to a DUI, you do, then you don't qualify for DACA. I know you and um, Tabitha have, have uh, informed me that many times. And so, you know, sometimes putting it down to maybe a reckless driving or a public intox will work for those clients. Yes, absolutely. That's huge. So it's a really good reminder to to those young people who have DACA or are considering applying to be very mindful of driving while intoxicated, make sure you take Uber um, and take precautions so that's not an issue. Yeah. Katie, anything else you want to tell us about, uh, about DACA, about the case, about the judge, anything? Final words? So, yeah, absolutely. So um, it was a very strongly worded opinion. <laughs> Um, I, we were kind of impressed by how firm the judge was in her orders. She actually required the Department of Homeland Security to post guidelines by Monday, so yesterday. Um, okay. Those were posted at the end of the day on Monday, and they indicate that initial DACA applications are available, that renewals will be for two years. They had been limited to one year, but those who got work permits for one year will now have an automatic extension. And there has been a return to Obama era advanced parole or travel permits. So there are a lot of people who wanted to be able to travel outside the country, visit family, people who were ill um, are now going to be able to do that because the requirements are a little bit more flexible like they were under the Obama administration. This is a huge opportunity um, for those who need to travel or are looking to regularize their status to become residents, permanent residents. Okay, well, great. Sounds like great news. Um, thank you very much, Katie. I, I know you're very busy. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to me. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yep, take care.